Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson Tonight, the show that is the sworn enemy of lying, pomposity, smugness, and groupthink. Speaking of those themes, the New York Times, the paper has been under particularly intense fire over the past year and a half for its coverage of the 2016 presidential race. And this isn't the usual, gee, the New York Times has gotten kind of liberal talk you've heard from conservatives for about four decades. This is full-throated outrage for many readers who believe the paper abandoned journalism and became an advocacy organization for Hillary Clinton against Donald Trump. The criticism became so relentless that just two weeks ago, the Times' public editor, Liz Spade, wrote a really nice piece with this headline. One thing voters agree on, better campaign coverage was needed. Has anything changed since she wrote that? Liz Spade joins us now. Liz, thanks a lot for coming on. And I thought it was a really honest and fair piece. Good for you. Good, thank you. Um, I want to give our viewers who maybe don't read your paper a sense of what some of your readers were talking about in expressing their outrage to you. Okay. So here is Thursday, November 10th, Wall Street Journal. This was the first print edition after the election. You can see the headline, A New Political Order. And there are a bunch of kind of analysis pieces. What does this mean? Here's the Times. Here's your paper's first print edition after Trump's election. Democrats, students, and foreign allies face the reality of a Trump presidency. Now, if you substituted Trump presidency with, I don't know, terminal cancer diagnosis, it would not change the meaning of this. I mean, that's advocacy, isn't it? I think that that kind of a headline is exactly what concerns me, which is that I don't, I don't consider it advocacy, but I consider it almost an, an, an unrecognized point of view that, that the Times has that comes from being in New York, being in a, you know, in a certain circle and seeing the world a certain way, not being in touch with, right. with people who don't live like them or don't live in cities and who are the ones that elected um, like Donald Trump right. to the presidency. They're just out of touch with that. And what I found when I, I mean, I got so many uh, emails into my office about five times the normal amount that I typically would get in a week. I started taking to the phones and just calling a lot of those those people to hear what they thought. And what I was most surprised by is how many liberal readers who I called um, who were angry at yes, the New York Times. because it was unfair. So your piece came out, and I was heartened as a lifetime reader of the New York Times. I thought, boy, someone's being kind of honest about this. There's no ideological diversity, so they're off the rails, and, and they should know, and you pointed it out. Here's today's lineup on the Times website as of 4.30 p.m. There are six top headlines here, and five of them are pretty aggressively anti-Trump. Trump's tough trade talk could danger American factories. Opinion, really, you're blaming transgender people for Trump. Trump's breezy calls to world leaders leave diplomats aghast. And then this, rigged or not, election positions Trump to shape rules on how you vote. In other words, it's Trump who's calling the election rigged, when, of course, it's liberals. It's Hillary and Jill Stein who are actually challenging the election results. This seems like more of the same to me. Um, I, we're probably not in the same space in terms of how how liberal you see the New York Times and how liberal I see it. I see the vast majority of journalists who walk in that door every day who, who work hard to have high journalistic standards, the kind that, that I agree with. But I do, I do agree with you that, that especially when it comes to political coverage, that that the guns can get pointed too much in one direction. Right. I mean, in fairness to the, to the Times, I would say I get as many letters on Hillary Clinton's emails, and why does the New York Times cover that so much? Why are they so relentless about it? And, you know, so I do think that they're... No, the Upper West Side is regard. upset about that. There's no question. Yeah. Now, when you say that the journalists who walk in the front door of the Times building are doing their best to be fair, I would believe you, except I know for a fact that's not true because I read their Twitter feeds, and I want to give you some examples. Now, these are not opinion columnists. These are not Gail yeah. Collins' uh, Twitter uh, feeds. These are Michael Barbero, for example, who's a straightforward news reporter. Here's one. Pa this is November 15th. Pardon me for asking, but what qualifies Jared Kushner to have a seat at the presidential table? Huh. There's Eric Lipton, another reporter. White House is QVC. It has started. Here's Peter Baker. For a new president from reality television, a cabinet selection that resembles a pageant. Liam Stack, and I'm quoting now, the Electoral College was meant to stop men like Trump from taking office. Are you kidding? These are yeah. news reporters saying yeah. this stuff? Yeah, I think it's outrageous. I think that that should not be. They shouldn't be tweeted, and they shouldn't, and it, it, and it does concern me that that would be, that that'd be 
um, I mean, everybody's going to have their personal political views. We all do, but they they ought to be personal. And if you sign up to be a journalist, then then that's what you ought to be. So, you know, when I say that I think the majority do walk in the door, there's there's hundreds and hundreds of reporters at the New York but Times. But these are the these are the ones who are covering politics. Are covering these politics, are the famous yeah. ones. And here are ones that particularly bothered me. Because they suggest not just the personal politics on the, on the part of the reporter, but what they believe the mission of the Times is. This is yeah. from Michael Barbero, November 9th. This is Election Day. Quote, we had fearless journalism throughout 2016. Voters wanted what they wanted. In other words, we tried to keep this guy from getting elected, but he did anyway. Peter Baker, same sentiment. This is recently. Real scandal isn't what the media didn't report. It's what it did, and readers didn't care. In other words, we tried to stop Trump from getting elected, but he got elected. Wait, don't blame us. That suggests they don't understand the mission of a newspaper, which is to bring you the news, not to affect the outcome of a, of a political race. Yeah, I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of angst and concern at big media organizations about whether we're going to get blamed by the left, by by you know the half of America that did not vote for Trump, for putting Trump in office. And so I do think that you see a lot of that sentiment out there. Yes, but is there concern? as much concern about non-left readers like me. No, who, I don't think there is. <laughs> huh. I, here's my honest, and I, you're not responsible yeah. for this, so I don't mean to bark at you yeah. about it, but where are the editors here? I mean, if, if, my, you know, if I was the New York Times and my editors were treating, tweeting crap like that, I would say, you stop that right now or I'm firing you. Why don't they do that? Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know that any of those people should be fired, but I do think that when people go over the line like that, and I think um, some of those are over the line, that, that there ought to be some kind of a consequence for that. There ought to at least be a clear, strict conversation that, that's had so that everybody else understands it, it's not okay. I know that they have rules. They periodically put them out. You may have seen them when they, yes. they'll issue a statement and say and it's ignored. not okay, but I'm not sure what happens. As so there are a bunch of consequences of this, and they're all bad, in my opinion. One, it undermines the business model of the New York Times, I think, which is based on its credibility as an impartial and accurate news source. It destroys that. But it also empowers the alternative media that everyone in your world is so upset about. They say, well, people are getting their news from these non-legitimate sites. And there's some truth in that, by the way. Why is that happening? Because legitimate so-called sites like the New York Times or NBC News or the Washington Post have so debased themselves that people feel like, I'm going somewhere else. Do you see that phenomenon? Not as much as you do. I think Fox News has debased itself more so in the opposite way. They're not, you know, I don't think that Fox News, like, holds holds the middle ground of sort of well, here's, honest Here's the difference. Journalism. On this show, which is the one thing I can speak for, I'm totally upfront about my opinions. Oh, sure. no, I, I never pretend sure. I mean, that the I news. think anything, well, I think our news is kind of above, repro I mean, I, I, well, I'm not, look, I'm not getting the position of defending a company. I can only defend my show. I think Fox News is fair. But this show, I'm totally upfront. So if Michael Barbaro comes out and says, you know what, I'm kind of a left-wing political activist, fine. I have no problem with that. I'm happy to read yeah. it. But when he lies to me and says I'm a straight news reporter, why shouldn't I be offended? Yeah. Well, I don't. I I am not <laughs> defending those kind of tweets, and I and I do agree with you that I just don't agree with some of the terms that they're debasing journalism. I don't agree with that, but I do agree that it it makes no sense to me in terms of what the New York Times claims it is and wants to be. And as you say, their business model, they have a business model that is based less on advertising and more on getting right. subscriptions from people. And why would you cut off half of America and make them feel like this is not their New York Times? But also there's a high handedness. When they start lecturing me about fake news, you guys have been on this obsessive jihad against fake news. I'm thinking, well, I kind of believe that Iraq had massive stockpiles of weapons of mass destruction because I read it in the New York Times. And, of course, that wasn't true. I thought maybe Tawana Brawley was telling the truth because I read it in the New York Times. So to lecture me or the rest of the country about fake news, not really in a position to do that. Fair? I, don't, I think that there's a category of fake news that goes out, and you know this, that is intentional. It's intentionally trying to trick you into something. Right. I don't think that's the same as weapons of mass destruction, where, where the, the journalists were not up to their highest standards, and you know I'm among those. I was, I was, you know, at the Washington Post at that time, 
too, so I'm not blaming anybody else, but the intention was not to put out fake news. That's different than... But I think swept up into the category of fake news is not just Ukrainian bloggers trying to undermine American democracy. It's also sites yeah. the Times doesn't agree with. And like, well, that's just fake because I disagree. That's my impression. Yeah. Liz Spade, okay. thank you. I okay. appreciate it. Thank Great you. to see you.